Hey, hey, it's ODB, also known as the Lincoln Addict. And I'm gonna show you guys a video today of my 65 Lincoln Continental, I call Rita Hayworth. The car's been sitting a couple weeks, and um, I think I drove it a couple weeks ago. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I got a friend in from Los Angeles. Uh, check him out on Instagram. He's all about Los Angeles. I'll put it right up here. You can search for him. He also has a website. He does a lot of pop culture stuff. What's ironic though, is he's also done a few of, he'll replicate where someone famous took a photo, whether it be, you know, Babe Ruth, James Dean, Rita Hayworth, Walt Disney. He's done a few where uh, Rita Hayworth um, was at, I think at her place where she lived for a while or something. But uh, he does mostly stuff on the West Coast, but he travels now and he, he comes to Florida and uh, just goes all over. So. He's gonna be in town. He's actually going to the Yankees Pirates uh, game today down in um, Tampa. So um, after the game, he's gonna come through. We're gonna go for a quick cruise, maybe get a quick bite to eat. What I wanna show you guys are two things. One, I'm gonna show you just kind of a cold start with this car sitting, how, how good it starts, knock on wood. And number two, the top going down while you're sitting in the car. So a lot of people have suggested different videos like, hey, can I fit golf clubs in my in my trunk, you know, when the top's down, things like that. So like this is one that I've had requested before. You know, can we kind of see the top going down from your perspective sitting in the driver or passenger seat? So let's do this. Now, um, on our Lifestyle Podcast, which is the other podcast I do, which is a weekly podcast, um, I talked about recently getting the lift and installing that and that went really well. We're gonna be running electric in my shop here, my, my garage I should say, my garage shop. And the next month or two, uh, my dad's good friend, one of his best friends, he uh, helps us a lot with stuff and he was helping yesterday at my parents and uh, we were talking about it. He's already drawn the plans up and um, that's gonna commence very very soon so i always got to remember the key thing here so square in the normal way up you'd the normal orientation you would think now i always put my foot on the brake as i've talked about that public service announcement a lot what i do you can see, uh, my buddy always talks about, um, he's he's more of a carburetor guy, expert than I am. He always talks about really when you're pumping it, someone could chime in on this, when you're pumping it, when it's not trying to start, I don't think it's really doing anything. But I had that bad habit in my blue car where it doesn't start as easy as this one. Okay, Ro shout out to Robert for selling me this car. But um, this car starts so well. The blue car, I have the prime pump that I'm gonna put in the back. You can get them for 30, 40 bucks. Um, that's gonna have a toggle switch or you can put it on a relay. And what it will do is prime the fuel. That car, if it sits a week, it takes a little bit, a lot more than this to get it started. You could pour fuel down the gullet. That's what I usually do. And it'll fire once that fuel gets pumping it'll run good what i'll do here is i'll tap on you heard me tap on probably there for a second and it kind of idled down uh this car starts really well um one thing i'm not is an expert when it comes to carburetors um blair and Teresa, or blair uh and Teresa, but blair primarily you know rebuilds them he knows them inside and out um with this car like i said it Robert told me this before I bought it from him. He said, man, this thing just, it could sit a month and boom, it fires right up. And you kind of saw that. Now, um, I have noticed that when I first turn the key, sometimes, and even if I'm driving it and I park it and I get in the car, the first turn, it doesn't want to do anything. All right, quick insert video. I'm going to put this in. Uh, we're later in the day, past four o'clock, and... Um, as I was recording this earlier today, I made the comment about, I was just checking on my pup. I made the comment about 
when I would turn the key, sometimes it was like, didn't want to do anything, didn't want to do anything, third time, no problem. I did suspect that it was the solenoid, okay? If you know Fords, if you know Lincolns, you know these guys go bad sometimes, right? I only had had one hiccup before with this. After we got the car, um, we were going on a family quick cruise one day, and when I went to start it, the starter wanted to stay engaged, okay? Today, after I pulled the car out, finished the video, I parked it, and I was going to leave earlier, and the starter wanted to stay engaged again. It's a pain because you got to pop the hood, run around to the front passenger side, and pull off one or two of the leads from the side there, right? Those two. I think one technically, but I usually just, I pull this one and then whichever one you got to pull off, I always forget. So um, I kind of was a little suspect that this thing was going bad. Now, the first time I had the hiccup, TC was like, well, if this is a little loose, which it kind of was, she's like, that's probably the issue. And after I tightened that nut, I didn't have an issue at all until today. So after I did the video, I ran into that hiccup and I was, I was like, well, it's probably gonna be fine. Okay, like I said earlier, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Went to my friend's place, gave their parents a ride in the car. It's uh, Mr. Job's birthday, he's 74 today, happy born day. And when I left their place, it did it again. The starter wanted to stay engaged. So I was like, oh boy, got that to stop. And when we were pulling out of their driveway, I could notice there was no power on any of the gauges. And I'm like, oh boy, it's either this is causing an issue as it passes through here, which I did suspect because ten, nine times out of 10, if you have an issue with something and then you immediately have a domino effect with something else, generally speaking, odds are it's going to be whatever that issue is. So when I left their place, I didn't have any power on any of the gauges. And I'm like, eh. We know 64, 65, you got to rebuild the amp gauge. This one hasn't been done yet. So we go on the cruise. The car did stall one time, and it started right back up, but I knew something was weird. Got home. Of course, there's no power really to go to anything, even to power the top back up. Of course, I was able to power it nicely through the key fob that I showed you guys earlier, and boom, tops back up, pop the hood, Took about less than five minutes. I had another solenoid on the shelf, put it in there, car starts perfectly fine. I immediately knew it fixed the issue because as soon as I turned the key, I could see um, the light for the low fuel indicator. That always lights up when you go to turn the key. Boom, that was back on, everything was good. So um, back to the video already in progress. I didn't want to give you guys an update. The solenoid was changed today. And also I do hear a lot of times that the new ones are junk. Um, so that was another reason why when I had that hiccup last year, I kind of thought, well, this is probably an older style one. If it's not broke, don't fix it. But once it does break, then you got to fix it. So back to the video, as I said, already in progress. Say what's up, puppy. <laughs> not to freak out. Second turn, maybe the worst, the third turn of the key, it'll fire up. You kind of saw there where it kind of was like, is it doing anything? And then it fired. Um, you know, could be a number of things, but really, uh, with this car, I'm of the notion, if it ain't broke, I ain't fixing it. I ain't going to put the time um, into worrying about little small things like that because this car runs fantastic and it's not an issue. Um, the few other things I do want to focus on this car, I've talked about in the past. I'm not going to go into all that now. Let's put the top down here in a minute. But I am going to work on those other things that are on the to-do list. And again, that, no big deal. You saw it started really good and it's been sitting uh, a few weeks. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, of course, my foot has been on the brake the entire time. And the reason for that is these cars are known to shift into reverse. If you let them sit idle, this car, Robert knew it, I know it, this column has to be rebuilt. When I pull up my driveway over there, when I'm in reverse, this drops into neutral. That's how loose 
what a loose caboose this is, okay? So my foot has been on the brake the entire time because I don't want this to fall into reverse and hit my tool bench back there and destroy the car, the fenders and all that. I'll do another video in the near future talking about, I've had this question, people asking, what's the difference between the dot, the bigger dot and the smaller dot? There is a difference. So what I'm gonna do, the lift is all the way down. I'm just literally taking my foot off the brake. I just go super slow just to do it. And just like that, we're down. So um, I'm gonna put it in park. I'm gonna leave my foot on the brake. Um, once we get the power done or the electric in the shop, then what I'll be able to do is uh, I got a truck that I'm gonna put above this. Don't worry, it's not gonna leak anything. I'm gonna have pans and stuff. And then this will be underneath it. So when I go to pull out, it won't have that big of a dip because the truck will be up and um, out of the way. And then this will just have the normal little off the slab there. Uh, eventually, I do need to do aprons. I do have a couple of things in, in front of the slab to kind of make it a little uh, less of a dump off there. Okay, so um, this is the perspective of putting the top down. So enough talking. Um, what you're going to do is I got two ways I can do it. I could do it here on the remote, which is plug and play. Um, these are sold for 200 to $250 and it's a little remote. This was not factory. Okay. I could do that. Um, or the normal way in the way that most people are going to do and, uh, forgive this little tape here. This is not no issue. Um, he had a night, he has a, um, a reversible camera in here and I put it down because at night it's pretty bright. There's not a way to dim it. It actually is very handy. And for now it's just ran right here. So that'll be kind of changed out. Now, um, one thing that I always forget, you would think putting the top down, I don't know the way my mind works is you might think that you would put push it up but you push it down so the way I remember it is you saw me pushing it down a minute ago down is top down and most people when you see their videos they're gonna turn around and they're gonna start looking at you know we like to watch the sequence because it's cool right so by me holding this down the deck lid is coming up that's the first um, the first thing that happens, and I'm not going to talk about every single sequence, but the first thing that happens is the, and I'm not going to get out of the car because the car is running and I got to keep my foot on the brake, but you see right there, those locks, they're spinning right now because when they first come out, both locks, one on each side, it's spinning to unlock it. But here's something you may not have ever thought about those locks continue to spin because they don't know until that deck lid gets all the way up. So there's a mod you can do to get those to stop spinning. It's pretty cool, but I'll talk about that in the future. Okay, getting a little sidetracked here. So down. What we're gonna do is we're gonna see the flappers going up now. Now, I always kind of go easy with it there. John and, and Teresa and everybody will tell you, don't you don't have to worry about it, it's, it's made to go. So what's happening now is, I'm gonna stop for a second. You heard a noise a second ago, that's the automatic locks up here, okay? These locks, these hooks, they, un, they unlatch and they go right in there. That area does need to be greased, but they go those those latches that was another part of the sequence this top as you saw it start to go down it can't go down until those locks and that's usually that's sometimes a challenge um, you see that panel up there that black panel it's kind of underneath the power line that's the header panel and that's where all that stuff is at so that sometimes has to come off I actually still have that off on my 64 because you got to grease that so I'm gonna keep pushing down foot 
still on the brake. Now what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna turn the car off so I can jump out because I wanna show you guys this. Okay. Um, one thing that I can't stress enough, okay, is this is a nice little storage area. You can see I had my cleaning supplies. We I took this to a show in um, several weeks back. Put it on a trailer, took it down to uh, my, my friend's car show. Um, these guys in here, I knew they were in here. But what's super important is that you can't leave anything in this trunk while you're putting the top down, okay? There's no... Um, safety system okay it's just you can't do it so here's what i'm gonna do really quick i got the remote now i'm gonna put this back up really quick and then we'll finish the sequence from inside the car you can see that stuff is out of the way that rainex um typically i'll be honest i wouldn't leave this stuff here but by the time i got home i put the car up and um I just left the stuff there. Typically, I won't do that. I'm going to take it out here in a few minutes. Um, but that's a good place to store stuff. But here's the key thing. You do not want to ever leave a cooler or something back here. Because if you're sitting up there and you're like, oh, yeah, we were out, you know, at the beach last weekend. And, you know, I left such and such, my, my longboard or whatever. If there's anything back here, it's going to mess this top up. Okay. This top... You don't want to have to take all this stuff apart. Lincoln Land's the only people, and, and Blair, and, and probably John Cashman and TC are the people that could take this stuff apart and put it back together. Again, if it's not broke, don't fix it, okay? So there's nothing back here. I knew there was nothing back here. I have gotten questions about these. Those are factory pieces. They're kind of what, they, what we call pads, if you will, and that's where the top kind of sits and rests. So I'm going to go down with this. Back to where we were at okay and you can kind of see here so from the perspective of sitting in the car and if you're turned around now you're hitting the switch down still with the flapper out in the erect position as john cashman would say those locks are still going the whole time And you can hear with them clicking there, they're, it's done. That's the cycle. So that's the sequence. So um, I hope that that helps explain. Um, John can rattle off and, you know, I highly suggest you go back and watch, type in Jay Leno's Garage, John Cashman or Jay Leno's Garage, Lincoln Continental. Um, Jay was on there, um, or excuse me, uh, Cashman was on there. Jay had bought a 66, a white one. Of course, he called Cashman, and, and Cashman went through and, and fixed everything and greased this and did that. Um, maybe in another video in the future, I can kind of explain each piece more like technical. But for the most part, what people want to know is how does the top work? You kind of saw that. Um, is it automatic? Do the windows go down? That's a question that we get a lot. I think John would get that. The, the answer is no. You see the windows are still up. The windows are totally separate than the convertible top itself, okay? Um, yes, the windows do have an auto drop feature. And you see there where the window dropped. And the window went back up. That's because if the top was up, you want that good seal. So for instance, if the top was up and somebody was gonna get in the back door, they would go like this, they would open the door, they would get in, they would close the door and that would go back up and seal. And that's one of the, one of the reasons is there's no B pillar here like there is on the sedans, okay? But the reason why I say that is these windows are totally separate from the convertible system. That's just 100% fact. They do not go down automatically. I'm sure someone maybe has modded. I wouldn't want to go through the trouble, but you could probably have some sort of, you know, uh, aftermarket stereo type system where, you know, I have friends on it where they can drop all four windows in their truck. Um, 
but with this, you know, I can drop the top and then like, let's say you had went somewhere to eat lunch, you know, today is a perfect day. We know it's not gonna rain. Um, you would just leave the windows down maybe um, if you wanted to kind of come out and as you're approaching your car, use the key fob remote. So um, I think that's it. If you wanna uh, purchase a sticker, I'll put a link there. Uh, we have a few left, Lincoln Attic, the originals and some of the newer ones. And with that being said, check out All About Los Angeles. I think he wants to do a quick video today. Got the fence up recently. I think I mentioned that in one of the OLP videos. That was a little bit of a fiasco. And with the four windows up, there she is. Needs to be wiped down. So I'm gonna do now. Take care, y'all. Please like, subscribe, share, comment. You know how we do. Peace.